Hello everybody, welcome to one of my videos. Today we're playing on the Amiga CD32. We're continuing with the series. Now that's what I call games. And this is episode 3 of 10. And each video on this series is going to have 10 games from the 100 that's on this disc. So this is episode 3. Let's go. We continue with a 100 game playthrough and we're carrying on with game 21 on this list, which is Cube 4. A 4D version of the Noughts and Crosses. It's a mouse game. This game is a three-dimensional version of zeros and crosses using coloured cubes instead of paper and pencil. Course of the game, alternatively, cubes are put on a 4x4 board or on top of any already present cubes. The position of the cube cannot be changed anymore. Each pile may be up to four cubes high, i.e. the 3D board or 4x4x4 large. There are no suspended cubes, illegal moves are refused and indicating by a display flash. The computer plays with red cubes, you are white ones. Multi-bug software presents. Is this Norton Crosses or the Ladybird's book? What does that say? Oh, four in a row. That's a weird R though, isn't it? It's looking more like a T. What is this? Multi-bug software presents four and row 3D. Well, you know it's to be the sharpest knife in the drawer. But that is definitely not noughts and crosses. Okay, it's a mouse game. So Jamie, put your joystick down on the floor. Right, we've got a picture of a brain. I assume that's a brain. A chip. And a stop. Okay, so what do we do? Okay, this wasn't quite what I was expecting. The minute, Jamie, what were you expecting? Noughts and crosses. Okay. What am I holding here? A paintbrush? Possibly a paintbrush. Okay, I can't even play noughts and crosses. Alright, okay, so this is 3D cute noughts and crosses. Okay, it took me a while to figure out, but this is actually now a magnifying glass with a square end, not a circle, which usually it is. Okay, but you don't press them here, you press them here. This is the layers, because it's a 4D perspective. Layer 4, which is the top, and layer 1, which is the bottom. Now you press the magnifying glass on the square you want to place the piece. Now I am white, computer is red. Now this is not your usual game of noughts and crosses. And the reason why that is the case, because noughts and crosses isn't done with cubes, and it's not 3D. And it's definitely not done in four rows, going upwards, and a long ways. So, we've got to try and get four in a row. And being against a computer, it's going to be a tough task indeed, isn't it? And he moves his playing pieces very, very quickly indeed. So, because we also build upwards, it's quite confusing. So, we're going to go and start placing them on the second row. And so is he. So he's already blocked my path already. So, yeah. Let's put one there, but I'm never going to beat the computer at 3D noughts and crosses. Right, it's blocked me again. Okay, I'm going to go there. And he's blocked me again. I can see a pattern here. Wherever I go, he goes. Just to spoil my thumb. Okay. Right, so... Oh, you made a big mistake! I've just won! There we go! Unbelievable. Yellow is a win for white. Red. I can't believe I just won that. So you can rotate the screen, but there we go, it is clear, in yellow, I have won. There's no way on this earth I'm going to beat the computer at master difficulty. Okay. Four in a row. White is me, red the computer, yellow is last move. And he's blocked me, which is understandable because I would have won. He blocked me, which is understandable, I would have won. Okay, now he's progressing upwards, I need to block him. He ruined my day, I'm going to ruin his. Okay, so, we'll go... No, start on the next level, there we go. And you can rotate it. Ah, he's one already. Oh yeah, okay, I well, didn't see that. Well, I did now. Okay, well that's all I can do for Norton Cross's 3D version. Okay, next on the agenda is... Cubus. A 3D Tetris game. It's a mouse game. Well, everyone loves Tetris. Again, it's another 3D perspective of a classic game. Okay, this is the main menu screen. F1 for game, F2 for high score, F3 for demo, F4 for training, escape to escape. And press F10 to toggle music on and off. Well, these games are very, very rare to have music. I'm not going to turn the music off, even though it is quite basic music. This program is shareware. Right, can you rotate the blocks? 
I'm guessing you can't. I'm glad the music's different because the title music wasn't all that. Training. Use the keys on the numeric keyboard to rotate the piece. Right, you can rotate the pieces. Right. Press the zap key to select a new piece. The effect can be seen best by rotating the L-shaped yellow piece, even though it's red. So tricky. Clever idea, but tricky. Right, okay. So put that one there, that should... Okay, good luck. I'm definitely going to need it. Okay, this is Tetris. Not your usual game of Tetris. This is 3D Tetris. Now, I'm not fantastic at Tetris. I'm okay. I do know a few people that are very, very good at Tetris. Um, will they be able to do this one? Now, you use the joystick to move the pieces around and fire button speeds up the drop. However, you've got to use the keyboard to rotate them, one way or another. I'm not talking about Blondie. Now, it's quite difficult to master which one goes in which direction. Every number does a different thing. Now, if there is a situation where you've got a piece you don't particularly want, you can zap it with the zero. However, you're limited, and that's called a zap. You're only limited to three of them. Apparently there's a bonus stage if you get past three levels which will allow you to progress and get more zaps. I've not got that far. In fact, I've been playing this game for about 20 minutes. I've not made a single line yet. However, this is probably the best go I've ever had. But trying to master the rotations. You do get a guide on the far right. It doesn't make it easier. And getting ones you don't want is not nice. Okay. Now I'm close to getting my first line. But I still haven't mastered which key goes where. I've got one zap left. Now if I can get this right, I can get my first... Yes! If I don't mess this up, that should be my first line. Woohoo! First ever 3D line in 3D Tetris. The first of hardly any, I expect. Okay, I am determined to get past one level of this game. To get past one level of this game, you will get two successful lines. If this is normal Tetris, it's probably done already. This is the most difficult game of Tetris I've ever played in my life. I'm still trying to learn the rotations on the keyboard of these playing pieces. Right, I don't like these ones. They are horrible, but I'm going to go for it anyway, because you are limited to three zaps. Right. Two lines, Jamie. All we need is two lines. In normal Tetris, that would be a breeze. Right. No. No. So much to think about. So much to think about. Right, okay, we've got a lifeline, because that should be my first line. So we're off the mark, we are halfway there. But room is limited at the back. So, it's no easy task. It's one of the problems with this game. It's a clever idea, but it does have its flaws. Because your view is so limited. You're trying to get the correct angle. How are you supposed to judge that? Half the time, I'm actually guessing here. Um, I mean, the guide doesn't really help you. Especially when you're like this, because I cannot see very much. Yeah, I'm guessing here. Um, yes! 
Yes, yes, baby! Done it! How difficult is that game? Blimey, three lines, you're having a laugh, pal. Got no more zaps. Uh, I'll go with that. I'm happy with that. That took me about 40 minutes. 40 minutes to do two lines if you need Tetris. There we go. Woo! Okay, next on the agenda, I'm assuming that stands for Double Square. Match the coloured squares to clear the blocks. It's a mouse game. This is the third game in Series 3 that is based around blocks. Okay. Okay, it literally chucks you straight into the game. My time limit is already going down. Okay, so you have 10 seconds. So, I'm not 100% sure what game of the game, but I think you've got to try and clear all the squares. I don't know why, but Sudoku springs to mind for some reason. Now, I'm getting 10 points per square, but certain squares will eliminate blank squares. And I guess the object of the game is to get all the squares lit. So, it's a case of remembering what squares clears what squares to make it easier for you to find all the squares and clear all the squares off the board. That probably makes no sense, but then I don't understand the game. So I'm just clicking buttons, clicking squares, getting 10 points for each. The time resets every time you click on a square. But there's no way on this earth I'm going to be able to memorise what ones get rid of what squares, when and how. So as you can see, as you progress, the squares are reducing. For two reasons. One, because I'm clicking on them. And two, because certain ones will get rid of them, and some of them give you more of them. So, if you're good at memorising where these squares are, and what squares remove certain ones, rows, then uh, you've got a really good memory. At the moment I've got 380 points, 390, but the squares are reducing. There we go, 430 points. Bad, you know, I know what I was doing. And when you press enter, it kicks you out of the game. I guess because you don't pay the three dollars it requires. Double squares. This game is shareware. If you like it, please send three dollars. I don't have three dollars. In return, you will get the password and version of that requester. Will you pay the fee? Yes. How do I do that? Oh, I paid the fee. Carry on. <laughs> okay, I don't know what I'm doing though. Anyway, I just sent you an imaginary three dollars. Spend it wisely. As a result of that, I can have another go. Try and have a go do a game I have no idea how to play. It's not the most exciting game in the world, is it? Just click those squares. Now, when I do these videos, I like to sort of talk over them and tell you a little bit about the game. I don't know what I'm doing here. 500 points, I'm beating my high score, and I'm still going. Boom, boom, pow. I don't know how I'm doing it. Just picking random squares with the finger pointer on the mouse cursor. Probably going to do the final one. Nope. Up there. No. Enter your name. I've got 600 points. How did I do it? I don't know. I don't know how I did it, but I spent $3. Yeah. And then it kicked me out. So I spent three imaginary dollars and then you kicked me out. That's just plain rude. Okay, next game on the list is Death Bringer. Shoot the aliens and score points. It's a joystick game. I like shoot 'em ups, but there's no author's instructions available. I have music! Lovely, lovely, jubbly. Death Bringers from Space. Black Monk's version of Ego the Avatar. Activate cheat mode, we don't cheat round here. Press help key, we don't cheat round here. Okay, sounds good, hopefully it's good, it's a shoot em up. Oh yes. We don't cheat. Morgan's Games does not cheat. Get ready, I'm ready. Okay, this is Death Bringer from Space. Now your spaceship looks like a, like an egg with two extra yolks. And they look even more like normal eggs. Just the one yolk. Right, we shoot two bullets. It does have quite a good rate of fire. Start off with four spaceships. A lot going on. 
Now those bullets, when they shoot, are quite fast. I'm assuming it's a one die, one hit die situation. Blimey, it's challenging. Way. Oh. Sorry about all my noises. <laughs> all right, so you carry on where you left off. Okay, I'll keep up here. It's ooh, safer, but it's not really, is it? Where is safe? Is anywhere safe? Oh. Okay. I don't know where safe. Now, when you resume, it actually rejoins with enemies that you've already killed staying gone. So that's a good thing. Boy, me! They do move very, very fast. Look at that rain of fire! It's not shooting at anything. Right, don't stay still for too long. <laughs> well, it's interesting, I've never played it before. It's, it's definitely challenging. I don't know what they are. No! The enemies do look quite unusual. There we go, four ships gone. Deathbringers from space, Black Monk's version of Ego, the Avatar. That's the easy one to kill. So some of their moving formations are quite difficult. So, <laughs> right, hang on a minute. That's the most difficult one. That's quite a different, difficult sequence that they follow. There's not a lot of room to move there. Ah, I'm safe up here. I'm safe from the evil eggs. There we go. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. Right, I'm fine up here. You're the slowest enemy I've seen so far. Ah, oh, makes an unusual sound. It goes. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Well, that's close. <laughs> what is going on? I do like changing games, I do like shoot 'em ups. Shoot 'em ups can be very, very challenging. Even though I don't know a lot about this game, it's rather challenging. <laughs> Killed from an egg! Oh, I don't believe it. Get ready. Very, very, very challenging indeed. <laughs> shooting them, it's best to keep moving left or right, because you don't get a lot of time to react, they're, they're shooting, especially if they're moving fast. Most of the time they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't have to kill all of them, some of them you just have to move out the way. This one's handy because now I know there's a secret hiding place. These ones just depart. Oh. Behind me, Jamie. They look like shields. Right, we meet again. I haven't died yet, Touchwood. My high score? Is that my current score? Ah, oh, get ready, I'm ready. So just one's gonna appear, there we go. The one I got away. 
Right, I'm guessing it's the same. So, uh, once again, I'll say up here. Is it going around in a loop? It does seem like it is. Because these are the same formations. It's just going around in a loop. Is he shooting more often? It looks like it. It's the same pattern again, over and over, over again. I'm sure it is. I quite like it though. It's a shooter. Of course, I'm gonna like it. Activate cheat mode. No, we're not cheating. Next game on today's list is Desert Defender. Sounds quite shooter buppy. Defend the desert from the oncoming aircraft. It's joystick and keyboard. Well, it's lucky I have both. Okay, what's the instructions? No instructions. Shooter maps don't seem to have instructions, do they? What's about cubes has so many instructions. 27th of December 1992. I was 10. Okay, this is Desert Defender. And the first thing you think about when you see this, what I do anyway, is Beachhead. There's a certain level in Beachhead where you've got to use a turret quite like this. Shooting planes quite like these. But on that game, you actually increase the height of your turret. Not here. In fact, I haven't shot anything yet. Now these planes are shooting at me. Your weapon is very, very short supply. One bullet is all you get. So once it's missed or hit in whatever case may be, you can shoot again. But they are shooting a lot often than I can. Now accuracy is poo. It's 14%. I'm not proud of that. Now, there's no way on this earth I'm going to be able to go from right to left very, very quickly to shoot them. You manage to get an accuracy percentage of 17% with three hits on the fast game with 50 planes. The gunpowder was random and you lost one life. You are rated as pretty bad. Well, give me time, mate. Give me time. You can only shoot one bullet at a time. Now, in Beachhead, you can actually increase the height of your turret. Not here. It's left and right and fire. So at the moment, we have seven successful hits with accuracy of 50, now 46, now back to 50%. Right, 52%. So I'm guessing we've got to shoot 50 planes. So, I'm starting to get the hang of it. Let me misses. There we go. One, two at a time. 55% accuracy. 15 hits, 16 hits, 57% accuracy, 58% accuracy, 60% accuracy, 61, 62, get the idea, I'm cooking on gas now, I have a killing machine, you know, I like shooter ups not the usual kind of shooter ups I play, but it's still quite good, it's samey, 31 hits. I guess in it's first to 50. No, it's not first to 50. You manage to get an accuracy percentage of 68% with 32 hits on a normal game with 50 planes. The gunpowder was random and you lost one life. You are rated as a good shot. Awesome. Nice. 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 So nice. Really so nice. I'm liking this accuracy. I'm not dying either. I like it a lot. You are rated as a sharp shooter. Now try fast. Let's go and try and... I'm going to try and get 100% accuracy. Halfway point. 100%. Going for it. 50 planes. No misses. That's my aim. That's my goal. That is my achievement. 31 now, 32! Oh, oh, close! Come on, Jamie, we can do this. 37, 38, 39, 10 to go! You can't get better than 100%. 23, 4, oh! Died. Never mind, carry on. 47. 48. 49. 50! 
you managed to get an accurate percentage of 100% with 50 hits on the normal game with 50 planes, the gun power was fixed and you lost 2 lives. You are rated as a master of the game. Now try the fast game. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, ooh. Slow. Why would you want to have to slow? Okay, fast. Fast. Yeah, it's a little bit different on... Just a little bit different. No, no, you can't be serious, man. I can't do it on fast. No. Okay, fast is a little bit extreme. Okay, next game we have Diamond. Collect all the diamonds and avoid the obstacles. It's a joystick game. Diamond Thief. Drive your little thief buggy, I don't know, call it whatever you like, around the screen and pick up the yellow diamonds while avoiding all the other nasties on the screen. When all the diamonds have been picked up, the gates at the side of the screen will open and you must manoeuvre yourself through them to the next level. Instructions. Instructions are given in the game. Has the game got music? I hope so. No music. Diamond Thief. Design, graphics and code by Harshi. Right mouse button for instructions and left mouse button to play the game. Pick up all the diamonds, avoid the alien guards and escape through the gates to the next level. Controls. Control your craft with the mouse or arrow keys. Shoot or use bomb. Hmm. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it, he says. Okay, this is Diamond Thief. Now you play as some kind of crosshair, even though it's a buggy. It looks quite similar to the character you play as in Episode 2 of the That's What I Call Games, which was Crossfire, which was terrible. Terrible game. Which apparently was supposed to be quite similar to Pac-Man. It was nothing like Pac-Man whatsoever. But anyway, your character is very similar to that. Now, this is incredibly sensitive. This is on the mouse. And moving the mouse ever so slowly will move it quite a lot. So you've got to be very, very gentle with the movement. Moving the mouse too quickly, he will go off the chain in terms of speed. And it doesn't move all that smoothly. But you've got to avoid the enemies, collect all of the diamonds, and the doors will open. Now these doors, if you hit them, or gate shall we say, if you hit the gate, you die. Trying to get this through the gate without hitting the gate can be tricky. There we go, level one complete, and we have a round of applause. No problemo, dude, says down the bottom. Now we have a fire button with the left mouse button, which very rarely do I hit anything with, and on the right mouse button we have a bomb, which kills everything on the screen. Just like that. And you're limited to one. You can pick up more along the way though, but. They will respawn. Of course they're going to respawn. They always respawn. Here they come. And here's the final diamond. So, don't hit the gates. They are being attacked by skulls. Now those bonuses you can pick up, but they're quite difficult to get. Oh, that's the one we got one. Gates. Don't hit the gate. There we go. I thank you. Thank you very much. Get the bombs. You're all out. Well, I can only get the bombs if the bombs are there. But at the moment, they're not there. They're shooting at me. Well, I'm aware of the situation. But your weapon is poo. I don't quite understand how you control the bullets. Because you just press the button and it shoots any direction. Oh, you can shoot multi-fire. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that might help. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I thought you had one bullet at a time. Well, that killed him as well. You can fly into him. That'll kill him. Come on, you can do better. Well, I know I can do better. It's close. Final one is very, very close to the gate. 
Why are they put them so close to the gates? I don't know. But there we go. Be ready. The gates are opening. So I'm guessing you can go in any one. Those skulls is going to fly straight into it. No, you survived. Woohoo! Level 3 completed! Get the bombs! I can't get the bombs. The bombs aren't there to be picked up. And as you can see, there's no bombs present on the screen. Just diamonds. Two gates and enemies shooting at me. And bonuses. That's fine. They're shooting. So am I. And occasionally I do shoot something. I don't know what that thing is. It's like a sweet. Looks like... Whoa! It's following me. Yeah, the frame rate is pretty atrocious. Not more to get. But I'm being chased by... I don't know what they are. Well... Crazy things. Leave me alone. They're shooting. I know that. Whoa! Slow down, Jamie. Slow! Woohoo! I'm happy with that. Four levels completed. Get more bombs. There's one up there. What are these things? I'm guessing don't hit them. I'm assuming. You don't shoot them. Just avoid them. Ooh. Level five. How many levels are there, I wonder? Probably quite a few. Whoa, whoa, crazy. Oh, I killed him. Two lives now. The enemies do abandon the screen very, very briefly. Right, get ready. The gates are opening. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Go, 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 go. Gotta be so accurate there. You don't want to hit a gate, which is your gate to get out of there. Easy as A, B, C. What is that thing? That looks like a jellyfish. Could be a boss battle? It's possible. I'm guessing you're not going to be able to kill that thing. But then, Jamie, you've got a bomb. Use the bomb. And there's another bomb there. Wait for that big thing to arrive again and we'll blow him up. If he is killable. Pick up the bomb. We have the bomb. Ooh. Ooh. Ah! Go, go, go. I'm trying. Right, if I don't start killing these... There we go. Just do that. I hit the doors. You have to play again. He's dead. You made a high score. Enter your name. I shall indeed. Okay, you get 50 points for killing a jellyfish, 60 points for killing a UFO, 70 points for killing a spider, 40 points for killing a lollipop, but with no stick, 30 points for killing an alien with big cheeks, and 20 points for a skull. Hmm, okay. Okay, next on the list we have Diplomacy. A computer version of the game Diplomacy. It's a mouse game. So this is based on a board game. I have to admit, I've never played a game called Diplomacy. In fact, I've never heard of a board game called Diplomacy, which means it's going to be quite difficult to play a game called Diplomacy if I know nothing about it. Oh my lord. Uh, okay. Right, I've never played this game before. Board game or computer, so I don't know what I'm doing. London, hello over London. So, what do I have to do? No unit in that province. Okay, what do I have to do? Hang on. Project. New game. We'll start a new game. New game. 
Okay, I've never played Diplomacy as a board game or a computer game, so I have absolutely no idea what I'm supposed to do. This is Great Britain. I live here. I do. Uh, so, where do we go? What do we do? No units in that province. Okay, what am I supposed to do? Issue orders. Where? How do I do this? What am I supposed to do? Flon support a LVP to Eddie I. Right, I didn't know you could do that. Okay. I still don't know what I'm doing. Uh, Flon support a war. What are the rules of diplomacy? According to Wikibooks, there are four basic orders in diplomacy. Hold, attack, support, and convoy. At each movement phase, players may order each unit either to hold its position, to attack another province, or to support another unit. Thank you. Diplomacy board game. Here's a summary from faculty.washington.edu. Length of game. Alternative rules for six to two players. Civil disorder. Dot. Length of game. Alternative rules for six to two players. Civil disorder. And more. Mm. Diplomacy is best played by seven players, though as few as two may play. Each player represents one of the great powers of Europe in the years prior to World War One: England, Germany, Russia, Turkey, Austria, Hungary, Italy and France. Each is independent of the other. At the start of the game, the players draw lots to determine which great power each will represent. This is the only element of the change in the game. As soon as one great power controls 18 supply centres, it is said to have gained control of Europe, and the player representing that great power is the winner. Players may terminate the game by mutual agreement before the winner is determined, in which case all players who have pieces on the board share equally in a draw. I still don't know what I'm doing. Well, I have subscribers here, 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 and here. Yes. Blimey, I didn't realise Finland was that far away. Blimey. Oh, we're moving. Woohoo! I just moved somebody! Now what? I don't know. I've got. I've been playing this for about 20 minutes. I haven't done anything. I've moved this one from here to here. That's all I've done. But apart from that, I haven't got a clue what I'm supposed to do here. Okay, next on the list is Dragon Toll. Shareware version of the Molong game. Now this is actually the second appearance of this type of game because I did a game called China on episode one of this series and hopefully this is going to be better but it's going to be exactly the same thing. <laughs> this is Dragon Tiles, even though it's very very similar to China which appeared in episode one, at least this one has music. This program is shareware. If you like it and intend to use it, please send £5 registration fee to Mr. S.J. Smith. Okay. Okay, this one, we actually get a choice of where we want to go. Let's go for a cube, because we've seen a lot of cubes on this video today. Okay. Now, I like this one a lot better already, because these symbols are quite retro-y. Now, the rules are pretty much the same. We've got to match the tiles. When you find two that match and they're easy accessible, click on them and they will disappear. But only if they're easy to access. If they're boxed in, closed in, or below in these ones' cases, you can't get access to them. Okay. So, we have some manic miners, we have some floppy disks, skull and crossbones, flames, smiley faces, ghostbusters, and some spiders. And whatever these things are. Right, so only if they're on the edges and easy accessible. If they're easy accessible, they'll appear in this box. Find the matching symbol, and you'll be getting rid of it. Now that one you can't get access because it's too closed in. So we don't get that one, we find something that isn't closed in. So, Skull and Crossbones is easy accessible, and so is that one. 
These are easy access for all, so we get rid of those too. And what's next? We have some Amiga symbols, which is awesome. And we have some, uh, okay, right. So yeah, there's not really a lot I can say about this game. And I pretty much struggled with the other one as well. Uh, smiley faces, get access to that. Two smiley faces, we get rid of that. Amiga, Amiga. Yes, go. They are gone. Um, we have these chips. We can't get... But we can. So it doesn't make any sense. So sometimes we can get them and sometimes we can't. That's really confused me now. Okay, two floppy disks. Don't copy that floppy. Right. Um, we have Batman and Batman. There we go. We have eyeball and eyeball. Two eyes. Perfect. Flame. We can't get access to that flame. Okay. So, yeah, I'm a little bit confused. Never mind. Can't get access to that. Uh, tree, one tree. Ah, that one and that one. Boom. Mouse and mouse. We can't get access to it. Yes. See, how come you can get that one? We can't get that one. Oh, I'm really, really confused. Ah, don't know what it is. It stare me right in the face. That one and that one. Boom. And that one, and that one, boom! And that one, we can't get access to. No, and no. No, it won't allow me to. Okay, tree, no, 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 no. We can't get access to this. We can't get access to this. And we can't get access to this. But we can get access to this. There we go, I didn't notice that. There we go, boom. Star, we can't get access to the star. We can't get access to the spider. We can't get access to the bricks. So it's looking like I'm not going to find many more, if there is any more. That's all I can say. I can't think of any more to say about this game. <laughs> Next on the agenda is Drive Wars. Kill the computer virus before it can do any damage. Joystick game. Note, Drive Wars is shareware. Always wanting money from me. Please send $7 or more, no checks. If you send me the money, I will be able to get RAM to a hard disk and most importantly, make more fantastic arcade style games like this. I'm 14 and I really need the money. Please send me, that's impressive actually. For a 14 year old, that is impressive. This is Drive Wars. This was actually made by a 14 year old. Okay, this is Drive Wars and we are playing as a floppy disk. Now this floppy disk can shoot fireballs. Now the object of the game is to go through each of the floppy disk drives and destroy the viruses. Sound straightforward? Kinda. Is it? No. It's not easy. It's very, very difficult actually. But there we go. Games are never simple. Now it's never going to be plain simple it's ailing, is it? Because of course we've got enemies that are going to fight back. Anything from rams to chips to mega mice to discs. And they fire electricity. So it's electricity versus fire. Now this game is very very similar to Air Ace 2 and Bop and Plop which appeared in episodes 1 and 2 on my channel. Now Bop and Plop wasn't that great. It is too was quite good, but the layout is very, very similar. Your score is pretty much in the same place at the bottom, but your lives, like those other games, are not present on the screen. So I'm not 100% sure how many lives you get. It's a one-hit die situation, and there are no additional weapons, but there's no time limit. Once you get to the end of the level, you'll fix that disk drive, and then you go on to the next. I don't know how many levels there are. Probably not very many. I'm going to take a wild stab in the dark and say four. Now these Amiga Mices shoot the same bullets as everything else, but they're quite difficult to see. Their bullets are a little bit smaller, and they blend in with the background. The background which looks kind of like the front of a Master System box. White with black lined squares. Now whether this game has boss battles, I don't know. I haven't got, there, haven't got far enough to find out. But it would be nice to see how many lives you have present on the screen. And whether you can get extra weapons, sorry, extra lives, I really don't know. At the moment, I'm getting attacked by everything. You don't have to kill everything, as long as you deal with the viruses. Because that's why we're here. We're here to save this disk drive from virus attacks. Now save the next computer. So we arrived at the end of the first level. Disk has been verified. 
No bonus stages, we go straight on to the next level. Quite similar, but it's going to have different enemies. But some enemies do make an appearance once again. We have the wires. Destroy the wires. We don't want to be electrocuted. Now, this is a one or two player game. If you're playing it as two player, your disc is wet. Oh, Billy No Mates over here. We have to go solo. So, a different level, but the same rule applies. We must save this disc drive. I like the sound effects. Every so often you'll hear a sound of the disk drive doing its usual loading sound, which is a nice touch. Unless, of course, you're using a GoTek. But then some GoTeks do have this built-in sound, which will give you that old-school loading sound. At the moment, I haven't died yet. Touch wood. Hopefully I'll keep it that way. I don't know what that thing is, but it really does fly fast. Right, these things, lots of them. But holding the fire button down is rapid fire. Which is very, very pleasing because there's a lot of them to kill here. Now, the creator of this game used a construction kit and he was actually 14 years old when he created this, so how cool is that? Fair play to him. He did a fantastic job. I wish I was making games at the age of 14. I wish I was making games now at the age of 36. This verified now saved the next computer. Well, that's why we're here to save the computers. Straight in the danger area. No time to drink a cup of tea or anything like that. Straight in the danger area. And this one does look very, very similar again, but we have these spillages. I assume they're spillages. Or corrosion. Who knows? They don't harm you. But everything else does. If it shoots at you, shoot back. Now, there are some enemies in this game that you cannot kill. But in the description of the game, it does say that. But it doesn't tell you what ones they are. So it's a case of finding them out for yourself. Now, this bit is a little bit on the red side. But that red is the same colour as my bullets. So apart from the yellow, you won't see my bullets. Now, try not to stay in the middle too much. Because that enemy that appears that goes diagonally... ...is quite dangerous. And it's fast, so best to keep to the sides. Kill them quick, you do get a slight delay before they start firing at you. Right, this disc here that seems to be flashing like there's no tomorrow, you can't kill. I don't think you can. I've tried and tried and tried again. I don't think you can. So, avoid it at all costs. Right, again, we're making good progress. 48,800 points. There are some virus discs. You don't want viruses around here. I was killed by something that didn't move. I was killed by something that didn't shoot. That was bad, Jamie. Never mind. Kill the wires. I avoided everything apart from an enemy that doesn't move. But anyway, we arrive at the end of that stage. This verified, now go to the bonus stage. So Jamie, there is bonus stage. I didn't think there was. Right, this is the furthest I've got. And I haven't done much better on bonus stages, have I? Got killed by an Amiga mouse. So, we just destroy everything. Now I didn't even get a warning there. I didn't know warning. <clears throat> Okay, I've got here again. I've lost one life. It's an improvement, but I'm going to try and learn from my mistakes. Stay in the middle. That way we don't get killed by whatever these things are. Now, when you blow them up, they don't disappear. They explode. But whether they still kill you, I don't know. So it's a case of going around the tunnel. I'm assuming. I'm not taking any risks. This might be the last level, but I don't know for absolute certainty. Don't hit anything, just in case. But one thing I've definitely found out in this game, you don't get any extra lives. Not a single one. You get the basics. Just the basics and only the basics. Same with your weapon. Just the basics. This is the bit that got me last time. Not this time, baby! Okay. So, this is the furthest point I've now reached. Fantastic to complete this today. 
what? <laughs> that was extremely close. Right, these ones are disappearing. You can't touch them. What killed me there? I didn't touch that. Now luckily, when you respawn, you are invincible for a very short time. So, I'm glad about that. Otherwise I would have died immediately, because it placed me right on top of them. Whether they kill me or not. Don't get killed by a disc drive, or ram, or a chip, or anything like that. So I have absolutely no idea what is up ahead. So keep moving from side to side, if possible. And they don't shoot immediately. Some do. These ones do. So that statistic is not accurate. This is quite a tricky level. This is the final life. Final attempt. Final go. Oh dear. No, he would have killed me anyway. There we go. Because he shoots quite fast. But there we go. That's the best I can do. That is Drive Wars. Okay, the final game of this episode is the driving game. Drive your car around the track and leave oil and mines for the other car. Joystick, it's a two-player. Well, that's going to be very difficult because I live on my own. Okay, but it's joystick. Game instructions. This is a fast two-player car racing game, but can be played with one player. That's a bonus. Simply race around each course, completing four laps. Does this game have music? I hope so. Not many games in this episode have had music. It's a driving game. Hopefully it does. It has some. This sound, this music, has appeared in a few games. Copyright 1993. Smash, bang, wallop. I think that car is desperate need of a service. Or a new start the motor. Oh, it's got it going. Oh. Oh, there you go. Sounds like me driving. Oh, you are not in real life. That definitely sounds like me driving on the computer game. the longest title screen build up to music I've ever heard. There we go. It's got music. Okay. I'm spinning. Oh right. No, 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 no. It did say it's one... Oh. Okay. It did actually say that it can be... one player, but quite clearly it's two player. So, because it went straight into the game and, and not any menu screens, I don't know how you change it. So I'm guessing I just go around the track, which does look a little bit like Supercars 2. Very similar, but not as good as Supercars 2. So I am the yellow car. Unfortunately, player two who isn't found at the moment is actually red car. And uh, yeah, there's gonna be a one-sided race. So I'm not really at driving games, but I should win this one. Uh, how many laps have we got to do? Mind you, I've actually left a oil slick there for my own stupidity to avoid now. Now I'm not usually too bad at top-down driving games. The, the maneuverability of the car isn't fantastic, I have to admit. But we're alive and well. We haven't crashed. Not yet. Or so on, a little bit. Okay, it'll work from time to time, maybe? Okay, maybe that one more, let them go. Uh, right, we have a pit as well. I shouldn't really need the pit, you know, driving solo, I, I should be fine. But then, I have had the occasional hit from time to time. There we go! Right, I mean. 
twice, straight into another one. Well, I won that one, and then that was inevitable, unless I crashed. Crash and burn, all that sort of stuff. This one is a lot shorter. A lot simpler. No, I am hitting the side, kind of fun. I'm not, I'm not fantastic driving games, to be honest. More of a shooting, shooting my person myself. I have that size ball platform. Find the car! Find the one and only car. Find the river. Find the tree. Right, let's go into the pits and see how the pits works out. Right, you go into the pits, nothing happens. Your car repairs itself, but nothing happens. There's no people, there's nothing there. You just stop and then it fixes itself. The bar has actually gone up. Now it's back fully repaired in the blink of an eye. Well, it's, it's not a bad little game, but it's not no, it's no fun on your own, really, is it? Blow this one up as well and see what happens. Game over. Red car scored zero. Yellow car scored eleven. And my red car is on fire. Okay, everybody, that is the end of my video. That is episode three now done of Now That's What I Call Games. And this is Jamie from Morgan This Games. Please like, please comment, please share, and please do subscribe to my channel. I have a Facebook fan page on Instagram, also on Twitch. Just type in Morgan This Games, you'll find it fairly easy. Please remember to click on the bell icon that will notify you when videos are uploaded. Fantastic. I'm not doing these sort of videos. I do retro long pages about sheets with hammer bead making and live streams and Friday night at UK time on Xbox. I love my week. Until next time, take it easy. Ciao, bye. See ya. My door. <laughs> I have a delivery. <laughs> I think it might be beer. <laughs> it's my birthday in a few days' time. I know who's bought me that. So nice of them. Yeah, I yeah, I got some beer. Today, this is episode 3, and we're doing the next 10 games on the list, which is starting off with, I don't know what it is. Yeah, good start, Jamie. Let's start off with, I don't know what it is. Yeah, that's a good start. Where's my joystick? Okay, we, okay, we're joining the 100 game playthrough, and this is episode 3 of 10, and once again, you're making mistakes, yeah. And we're going to do another 10 videos. No, not 10 videos, but it will be 10 videos, but not 10 videos today. It's 10 games today, not 10 videos today. Press escape at any time to turn to the screen. Press 10 to toggle music on and off. Well, these games very, very limited. Right, I might, I might need to do the training because I don't know how to do this. That was poo, baby. How do you make it go down? Oh, like that. A bit late now, damage is done. If you had unlimited zaps, that would help a lot. Absolutely. But I'm out of zaps. I can't zap anymore. Now there's a chance, a very slim chance, this could be one. It's not though. When he die, he goes. Brr. I've got an eyelash stuck in my eyeball. Okay. I quite like that one. Of ten. Now the last. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to one of my videos. Today we're continuing with this 100 game playthrough of that's what I call games. Ten series video themajig. <laughs> Each video in the series is gonna have ten videos. Jamie, you're doing this again. This is the third time you've done this, and you're making the same mistakes. Same time next week. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Episode 3 of 10. Each video is going to have 10 videos. <sighs> every time, every time, every, every, every time, Jamie. Look, this is what you came up with as an idea for your channel. Each video has 10 games. There is 10 episodes in the series. 10 tens is 100. Yes, yes. Come on, Jamie, it's your own idea. Sure you know how to say it.
And this is episode 3 of 10 of the hour, what's that? So, this is episode 3. Let's go. There we go. See, you can do it. And then the next phase is the bit you've already said. Now, when I'm watching other people's streams, it's very, very rare I make game requests. But something even rarer than that, I don't nominate people. But today, I'm making an exception. Now, one of my awesome friends and awesome subscribers, Mr. Raw, is an expert in Tetris. I didn't nominate you, Mr. Raw. Give Cubus a try. What are you like with 3D Tetris? It took me 20 minutes to do one line and 40 minutes to do three. But I nominate you. Please, please give it a whirl. Unless you already have already. If you already have already, you're probably an expert already. But if you haven't, I nominate you. Please give it a try. There we go. I nominate Mr. Raw. <laughs>